last week at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. Scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition. And that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. So today we tell the world that America has achieved a tremendous scientific breakthrough. One that happened because we invested in our national labs and we invested in fundamental research. And tomorrow, we'll continue to work toward a future that is powered in part by fusion energy. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, we used to work with her, Jennifer's lovely folks. Uh, she was very excited to announce this human breakthrough, this scientific breakthrough that America happened to actually lead here. A milestone uh, about fusion energy and they found a way to actually generate more energy uh, through this scientific process that I don't really fully understand. That's why I had to read through this whole thing. But I want you guys to remember one thing that she did say though. We got to this point because we funded scientific research for this new energy development. A fight that's always happening among politicians, even though it just comes from solar energy or wind energy. The fight that this is unnecessary. Here's a new form of it. I wonder if the fight will continue. Let's go to how this whole thing works. This is wild to me. The achievement at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab came when 192 high energy lasers converged on a diamond capsule containing a cylinder about the size of a peppercorn and filled with deuterium and tritium. The lasers entered either end of the cylinder and heated the contents to over 3 million degrees Celsius. The reaction briefly simulating the conditions of a star. Dude, this is amazing to me. Lab lasers had triggered fusion reactions before, but this time the scientists managed to keep the reaction going long enough to produce three megajoules of energy. More than the two megajoules the lasers had deposited. That's what NNSA Deputy Administrator of Defense Programs Marvin Adams said. Now, fusion energy has long been a dream for scientists who say the technology will enable cheap, plentiful power that does not produce the planet heating gases or pollution that come with burning fossil fuels. And it would not leave behind the piles of radioactive waste that the fleet of current fission reactors produce and whose disposal has vexed Washington for decades. We're getting somewhere, right? Here's more though, but as significant as the new achievement is, scientists say it will take decades and hundreds of billions of dollars to reach a point where the technology can be deployed commercially. Livermore Lab Director Kimberly S. Boodle said commercialization would still take a few decades, but was moving to the foreground. Hold on for a second, because again, they said it would take a few what billion, hundreds of billions of dollars. And people may hear that and go, "Oh my God, we can't put all that money into it. We put hundreds of billions of dollars into our military. Look at how advanced and how much further ahead of everyone else in the world our military is. This could be similar. When you pump money into something, hundreds of billions of dollars, you get results. So the commercialization part there, Jordan, really excited me because we're like commercialization. That means maybe these fusion energy things could be fueling things like DeLoreans. Watch. <laughs> What are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. Go ahead, quick, get in the car. No, 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 look, Doc, I just got here, okay? Jennifer's here, we're gonna take the new truck for a spin. Well, bring her along. Hey, Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Let's see if John Iroda wants to attach that to his electric scion. It'll work out great. <laughs> Sorry, John. What are your thoughts, Joy? This is amazing, right? It it is. It's really cool and encouraging. Um, I think the military uh, budget is a good point because also the military is like the largest, one of the largest emitters uh, of of emissions in the world. So not only are we pumping now this year eight hundred some billion into it and more and more every single year, it's also a huge polluter. So it's like we're wasting all this money and we're making the environment worse. But like, you know, tens or hundreds of billions of dollars globally is nothing. So it shouldn't just be US research. Like the, the real solution here is a global collaborative approach. Get the other G7 
countries involved, get the G20 involved, get the United Nations involved. Like the, everyone chipped in a little bit and you had the top scientists from all over the world working together. You could probably expedite that timeline, share research, share findings, and you would probably move it along quicker. We need to if we wanna protect the planet. There's a few hiccups that I would imagine <laughs> we're going to encounter. Corporate lobbyists trying to slow and delay, framing it as some government waste type thing to prolong and ensure the longevity and financial stability of greenhouse gas and oil and drilling companies. They have an army of lobbyists that show up to every climate summit. And also where this research goes once we do hit commercialization, because this is government funded research. And unfortunately with so many other government researched programs, it ends up in the hands of corporations who then sell it at a high, uh, high markup to consumers. So like really, if, if the government is funding this, we've already funded it. Why should we then have to pay for it? So I think, a, a, I'm gonna be real, I probably won't be alive to see it. <laughs> but also, <laughs> if, if we do, or when it does come about, unfortunately, I'd imagine the, if the way things keep going the way they are, peop, consumers are going to be you know, price gouged by private corporations for this. It's just a couple decades, bro. I think you can make it. Maybe several uh, decades. You're like what, 35 years old, 32? You're in your early 30s. 35, I like. exactly. Yeah. Oh, look how good I am at this. I can near you. You'll make it to like <laughs> 65. I, I believe in you, brother. That seems uh, old for me. I'm good. <laughs> that's when you can find your DeLorean with your weird glasses down. 